So if you're watching this, I can already tell that you value your time and you're interested in learning how to develop a great looking website which can not only help your business grow, but can also make your life much, much easier. Now in this course, we're gonna learn many things, many valuable things that you never thought you'd learn. But we're gonna start where we should start, by thinking about website design in a way where we are basically creating a dedicated digital employee instead of just an online existence, like most websites are these days. Next, we're going to explore website user psychology briefly so that you can understand why websites are structured in specific ways in order to persuade and guide visitors to take specific actions which ultimately help us meet our business objectives. Once we understand the fundamentals, I'm going to show you some real world examples of established companies which follow these exact same rules and structures that we're going to cover. Next, we'll be developing your website page's purpose, why your website page exists and what it is going to do for you and your business. And in the next lesson, we're going to be covering your specific business objectives. So we have your purpose, and then we have the actual objectives that we want your website to achieve for your business. This could be maximizing conversions, generating leads, it could be a whole range of things, but we'll cover that more in the lesson itself. We're then going to dive into UX design or user experience design, so you can build a structure for your website and stay organized throughout the process. Don't worry if you have no specific software or programs, you can literally do this on Microsoft Word. So don't worry, it doesn't need to be complicated, we just need to understand the structure of each page and why it matters. Once we understand the power of UX design, we'll then be showing you how to structure the most important page of your website, the home page or landing page, whichever you wanna call it. This is the one page where pretty much every new visitor is gonna land, so we need to make sure it is structured in the right way, that's super, super important. And once we've covered our basis, we'll then be diving into a free website building platform which requires no coding whatsoever, where you build your new website with me, step by step by your side. Remember, you don't need any experience in website design, you don't need any coding experience, and you don't even need to be great on computers, because we're literally gonna go through everything step by step from start to finish. I currently build websites myself every single day and charge between nine to 20 to 25,000 per website, depending on how complicated the website is. So if you just simply follow these steps and guidance that I'm about to give you, you'd essentially be left with an incredible website which costs you next to nothing and simply just took you a little bit of time to do yourself. So if you wanna make sure that your website looks great, provides an amazing user experience, and ultimately helps you to reach your business goals, you're in the right place. I'll see you in the very next lesson. What if I told you you could have an employee that works non-stop 24 hours a day for just $200 a year? Now, if you had a brain, you would obviously say yes, right? Well, that is exactly what is possible when you have a website which is built to do a number of very specific jobs. But what does it mean to think of your website as a digital employee? Well, think about it this way. How many times have you visited a website which just feels really nice to browse through and you ultimately end up either purchasing a product or signing up for some sort of exclusive offers or newsletter? So this isn't by accident. The website that you've experienced where you followed through and did exactly what the company or the person wanted you to do has been built in a very specific way to persuade you to do just that. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense at the moment. We're going to go over examples of websites very soon to show you exactly what I mean, but just keep it in mind for now. So when a website is literally guiding customers to taking a very particular action, this is essentially what I mean by your website being a digital employee. It doesn't take days off, it doesn't need holidays, and it never stops working for you. If you follow this course and build your website using our step-by-step -step guidance, you're going to be able to build a website for yourself just like this. Your website should be working hard for you every single day. And there are too many websites out there that just literally exist and are just boards of information built in a hope that someone somewhere will spend the time going through every single page to get what they need. This is why the vast majority of websites out there on the internet are trash. And we're going to make sure that you build a world-class website that is built specifically for the objectives that you needed to achieve. Now we have the correct mindset in regards to how we should be thinking about our website, let's look at how customers think when visiting a brand new website they've never been to before. Can't wait to see you in the next lesson. I'll see you there. So what do we think about when going to a brand new website for the first time? Although the type of website could be completely different and most likely will be, our thought process is almost always exactly the same. When we come to a new website, we ask ourselves three key questions in a very specific order, subconsciously of course, as saying them out loud may be a little bit weird. So the first thing we always ask ourselves is, am I in the right place? We ask ourselves this because we want to know if this website is going to help us achieve the objective that we are setting out for ourselves. For example, 
if we wanted to hire someone to design a logo for us and when we landed on their homepage it had pictures of gardening with no logo in sight, we'd most likely not spend any more than one second there before moving on and you know, not wasting any more of our time. On the other hand, if we visited a website and there were clear, well-designed logos and a nice headline right in front of us, then we'd know we were in the right place. Which is when we'd ask the second question of, is this website, person or company trustworthy? Now, please bear in mind that we're going to show you exactly how to structure your landing page or homepage, whatever you want to call it, in the way which is going to answer these questions specifically in the order that the person's going to be asking themselves. So just be patient for a moment. We'll cover that very soon. So at this point, the user wants to know if they can trust you. They know that the website is relevant to their needs, but they want to know and make sure that you are reliable. And once they trust you, the next question that they'll ask themselves is, okay, I'm in the right place, you seem trustworthy, what can you offer me and how are you gonna solve my problem? This is where users are open to learning more about you, your product and service, or just learn more about you in general. They'll spend a little bit of time on your website and try to find a solution to their needs or just be curious and kind of browse around. Obviously, we want our user to perform certain tasks, which we'll come to later, so don't get ahead of ourselves just yet. We first have to learn how to capture someone's attention before eventually marrying them. So let's take things slow and explore some websites that understand these three key principles perfectly. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so now we have a really good idea of what we should be thinking about when developing a website, our new website. And also, we understand what our users are thinking about and what's going through their minds when they come to a brand new website they've never been to before. So now let's look at some different successful companies and how they use the exact same approach to structure and develop their website. First up is King Kong. King Kong uses the exact same structure we're going to teach you in this very course. So you can create an effective website which can convert fresh website traffic into paying customers or clients. Okay, so first up, King Kong. Now, this is a digital marketing agency based in Australia. They are doing crazy, crazy, crazy well. And they are one of the authority figures in that particular space. Now, look at what they say. Slap bang in the middle of the screen as soon as as you land on their homepage, like steroids for business. They're telling you exactly what they're going to help you do and what to expect as a customer of King Kong. Now, one of the really important points is the fact that they have their call to action or their data capture section right slap bang in the middle of the page again, so that if you're interested, you can literally type your email address and they will capture you as a potential lead or prospect. Now, as you go down, you'll see that the next section is all trust building. They have a video here, which is really nicely designed, but they also have a lot of trust building elements here, which if you remember, the second question that all customers ask themselves is, can I trust this company or this person? Okay, so if we go down again, the next section is exactly what we said before. The first question, am I in the right place? The second question, can I trust these people or this company? The third section, okay, tell me a little bit about your business. And this is exactly what they're doing. This, honestly, the actual structure is exactly the same, guys. Let's move on to Shopify to see what they do. Can you remember what we said the first question customers ask themselves is when they come to a new website? That's right, am I in the right place? So once again, we have the headline which tells the user exactly what to expect from the platform. It literally tells you that you are in the right place within one, two, three, four, five, six words. That is something that you need to look to try and do yourself, no matter what industry, no matter what type of business you do, it is very important that you tell the user exactly what you can offer them and why they should choose you within the first couple of seconds of landing on your homepage. And again, as we scroll down, look at all of these examples of amazing stores that have been built on Shopify from other people who also use Shopify. So what is that showing the customer or the user? It's showing you that other people use Shopify, which we already know, but also there is an incredible opportunity and potential to create amazing websites using the platform. 
And as we go down, you can see that the third point of, okay, tell me more, is very, very obvious here. Best path to take forward, you're literally telling them how to take the next steps or which step will be best for them. Telling them more about your actual platform, what you can actually do with the platform. It is really, really simple stuff. So again, guys, this is really simple stuff. The first section needs to tell the user exactly what to expect from your website to make sure that it answers their question of, am I in the right place? And again, the second section is all about trust building. Obviously, Shopify use examples of people who use their platform, whereas King Kong use their awards and things that they have achieved over the years. And again, in regards to tell me more about the business, Shopify literally tells you exactly what the best steps forward are to use the platform and also goes into more detail later on in the web page. And one last website just to drive the message home. Last but not least is Founder. So Founder is using the exact same approach, training from the world's greatest entrepreneurs. It's literally telling you exactly what to expect from the second you land on the homepage. And look at this. Trusted by Fast Company, Time, Forbes, Shopify, Fortune, Teachable, all of these companies. So it's again, just building so much trust with the user because all of these companies are all extremely credible companies. Really, really interesting stuff. So again, they tell you exactly where you are so you know that you're on the right place and that you are going to get help with the problems that you have. Next. They build trust with you. Again, exactly the same as King Kong and Shopify. Exactly the same. They just use a different type of trust building process. And lastly, essentially tell you more about what they can do for you. So the process is exactly the same, guys. It's not different. All of the leading websites out there are using this simple step-by-step -step system to build trust with users. So make sure that you keep this in mind when we build the UX design later on in the course. So now we've seen firsthand the exact formula being used across pretty much any type of website out there. Let's start focusing on developing your website by clarifying your website's focus and purpose. Things are about to get very exciting, so I will see you very soon. Well, let's look at the three websites we explored as examples earlier so we can understand what their main objectives are and which you should use to develop your own more effectively. So what are the objectives of these three websites, King Kong, Shopify, and Founder? Three websites which we've already mentioned in this course, and we've already shown you that they do things very, very well. They do things by the book, and ultimately they get the results that they are looking for because of following these simple rules. Now, from an objective standpoint, King Kong is essentially trying to put you into one of two buckets. So if you put your email address in there, They're essentially going to take you to a page which is going to put you into either the client bucket or the student bucket okay now they'll you know give you a video blah 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 and again lots and lots of trust here engaging video um, this video looks extremely well made as well um, this as well is a nice little a nice little tip so if we click on this button Again, lots of scarcity. Be quick. This ends on the 3rd of January or whatever. It's not true. It's going to be there forever. So ultimately, they're going to take you through a 30-minute growth strategy session. Um, obviously, you put in your name. So what they're trying to do is they're just trying to get as much information about you so they can put you in either the um, strategy so what they're basically trying to do is they're trying to put you into one of two buckets. They're trying to either find out if you have a service or a product. They're trying to just basically learn about you. And um, the more information that they have about you, the more they are going to be able to sell their products to you. And that is something that is truly, truly, truly powerful when you are looking to actually sell a product to somebody. It's one of the most important things when you're actually looking to sell to someone, understanding exactly what they want and who they are. The more you understand about someone, the more likely you are to sell to them. Um, when they actually get to this point, I think it's later on in the process. There, here it is. So ultimately what they're trying to do, as I mentioned before, is they're trying to actually get someone to hire them or to actually teach someone how to do it. 
obviously hiring someone is going to be a lot more expensive than courses, but they're getting both ends of the spectrum. So their objective is to basically segment their users into high paying people who can actually hire them for their work and people who don't have the budget to work with them, who they can sell courses to and actually teach them how to do the process that they actually follow through with. So let's move on to Shopify. Shopify is pretty much the same, to be honest. They have their call to action or their data sort of data capture section right here, slap bang on the first section of the screen. And they are urging you to basically start a free trial. Now, if you said to someone, oh, you know, you are going to have to build a full website and you actually have to pay for the website before you even, you know, make it live and, you know, you have to pay for it before you even start designing it. Nobody is going to start that website. You know, you have no connection to the website. However, if you start building a great website and then actually like what you see, then you are going to be far more likely to, you know, actually pay for that website afterwards. So if you're giving people 14 days of building a website and then they actually like their website, they're going to end up buying it afterwards. It's kind of like giving someone a car for 14 days to see if they like it. They're going to become very attached to that car and they're going to ultimately be more inclined to buying that car at the end of the 14 days. This is the exact model that Shopify uses. They give people a free trial, hoping that they'll build a website that they like because they have such a, um, a, a unique and simple user interface. So you can build websites even if, if you have no experience whatsoever. And then you can basically sell them the website. Now, Founder is a little bit different. Founder is very, very clever at getting people to buy their courses. Now, they do it in a multitude of different ways. Now, for example, if we go down, so we've already covered the fact that they do this section very well, they build trust very well. Let's go to the courses section. So their entire objective is to sell courses. So remember that as we go through, okay? So again, trust building, Gary V's there. And so we're going through, these are all the courses that they sell now. Basically what they do is they ask you to enroll now, but they also offer a free mini training. What this does is this just simply gives you a little bit of an insight in regards to what the actual course is about. Now, these free mini trainings is not a training. It's not a training whatsoever. It's essentially just one long sales pitch for you to learn more about what's inside the course. They are not trying to train you or teach you, teach you anything. They don't give you any information in regards to what the actual course is um, going to teach you. But what they do is they just simply just outline everything really briefly so it gets you interested. Now, one thing to really point out here is down in the bottom left-hand corner, I'm not sure if you saw it, but there's another one. Um, it's basically an entrepreneur registered for the Instagram domination program. This is absolute baloney. It's not true in the slightest. It's just an automated thing that just happens with uh, verified by proof. That's like a, um, a little system that just pops these up every now and again, just to build authority and just to build trust. Now, another thing which is important to keep in mind is 11.49, right? Okay, so apparently 11 minutes and 46 seconds or 45 seconds or 44 seconds, the training starts then, right? So it's supposed, it's supposed to be live, right? This is supposed to be live. So if we go back, so this started at like, 12 or 13 minutes, I can't remember. If we go back and we click on any of the other mini trainings here, guess what? It literally has the exact same time for every single training. So you're telling me that every single training has the exact same start time? I am not buying that for a second. So again, it's just a little tactic just to actually help the user to make a decision. We want you to make a decision as fast as possible. That's essentially what um, they are trying to get you to do. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight in regards to the objectives and how each of these companies actually use objective-based design to ultimately build their website. Now, every single website needs to be based around one single objective. King Kong is slightly different, um, but essentially it's because they're appealing to high paying clients and low paying clients as well, okay? At the beginning of your business, you're only going to be appealing to one type of client, much like founder, for example, 
who are essentially just wanting to sell people courses. People who are going to be buying the courses are going to be around the same price point. So keep that in mind. Shopify is a really good example as well. The, all they want is just for someone to start a free trial. That's literally all they want to happen. They don't care about anything else. So now you see how these successful companies set objectives for their websites to drive their businesses forward. Now you should have a really good idea in regards to how you can lay out your own objectives to push both yourself and your business forward. Again, if you need any guidance or advice with this, pop me an email at scott at brighterfreelance.com. I'm here to help and support, as I said before, so I look forward to hearing from you if you need any additional guidance. Apart from that, I will see you in the next lesson. Well, let's look at the three websites we explored as examples earlier so we can understand what their main objectives are and which you should use to develop your own more effectively. So what are the objectives of these three websites, King Kong, Shopify, and Founder? Three websites which we've already mentioned in this course, and we've already shown you that they do things very, very well. They do things by the book, and ultimately they get the results that they are looking for because of following these simple rules. Now, from an objective standpoint, King Kong is essentially trying to put you into one of two buckets. So if you put your email address in there, They're essentially going to take you to a page which is going to put you into either the client bucket or the student bucket okay now they'll you know give you a video blah 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 and again lots and lots of trust here engaging video um, this video looks extremely well made as well um, this as well is a nice little a nice little tip so if we click on this button Again, lots of scarcity. Be quick. This ends on the 3rd of January or whatever. It's not true. It's going to be there forever. So ultimately, they're going to take you through a 30-minute growth strategy session. Um, obviously, you put in your name. So what they're trying to do is they're just trying to get as much information about you so they can put you in either the um, strategy so what they're basically trying to do is they're trying to put you into one of two buckets. They're trying to either find out if you have a service or a product. They're trying to just basically learn about you. And um, the more information that they have about you, the more they are going to be able to sell their products to you. And that is something that is truly, truly, truly powerful when you are looking to actually sell a product to somebody. It's one of the most important things when you're actually looking to sell to someone, understanding exactly what they want and who they are. The more you understand about someone, the more likely you are to sell to them. Um, when they actually get to this point, I think it's later on in the process. There, here it is. So ultimately what they're trying to do, as I mentioned before, is they're trying to actually get someone to hire them or to actually teach someone how to do it. Obviously, hiring someone is going to be a lot more expensive than courses, but they're getting both ends of the spectrum. So their objective is to basically segment their users into high-paying people who can actually hire them for their work and people who don't have the budget to work with them, who they can sell courses to and actually teach them how to do the process that they actually follow through with. So let's move on to Shopify. Shopify is pretty much the same, to be honest. They have their call to action or their data sort of data capture section right here, slap bang on the first section of the screen. And they are urging you to basically start a free trial. Now, if you said to someone, oh, you know, you are going to have to build a full website and you actually have to pay for the website before you even you know, make it live and you, know, you have to pay for it before you even start designing it. Nobody is going to start that website. You, know, you have no connection to the website. However, if you start building a great website and then actually like what you see, then you are going to be far more likely to, you know, actually pay for that website afterwards so if you're giving people 14 days of building a website and then they actually like their website they're going to end up buying it afterwards it's kind of like 
giving someone a car for 14 days to see if they like it. They're going to become very attached to that car and they're going to ultimately be more inclined to buying that car at the end of the 14 days. This is the exact model that Shopify uses. They give people a free trial, hoping that they'll build a website that they like because they have such a, um, a, a unique and simple user interface. So you can build websites even if, if you have no experience whatsoever. And then you can basically sell them the websites. Now, Founder is a little bit different. Founder is very, very clever at getting people to buy their courses. Now, they do it in a multitude of different ways. Now, for example, if we go down, so we've already covered the fact that they do this section very well, they build trust very well. Let's go to the courses section. So their entire objective is to sell courses. So remember that as we go through, okay? So again, trust building, Gary V's there. And so we're going through, these are all the courses that they sell now. Basically what they do is they ask you to enroll now, but they also offer a free mini training. What this does is this just simply gives you a little bit of an insight in regards to what the actual course is about. Now, these free mini trainings is not a training. It's not a training whatsoever. It's essentially just one long sales pitch for you to learn more about what's inside the course. They are not trying to train you or teach you, teach you anything. They don't give you any information in regards to what the actual course is um, going to teach you. But what they do is they just simply just outline everything really briefly so it gets you interested. Now, one thing to really point out here is down in the bottom left-hand corner, I'm not sure if you saw it, but there's another one. Um, it's basically an entrepreneur registered for the Instagram domination program. This is absolute baloney. It's not true in the slightest. It's just an automated thing that just happens with uh, verified by proof. That's like a, um, a little system that just pops these up every now and again, just to build authority and just to build trust. Now, another thing which is important to keep in mind is 1149, right? Okay, so apparently 11 minutes and 46 seconds or 45 seconds or 44 seconds, the training starts then, right? So it's supposed, it's supposed to be live, right? This is supposed to be live. So if we go back, so this started at like, 12 or 13 minutes, I can't remember. If we go back and we click on any of the other mini trainings here, guess what? It literally has the exact same time for every single training. So you're telling me that every single training has the exact same start time? I am not buying that for a second. So again, it's just a little tactic just to actually help the user to make a decision. We want you to make a decision as fast as possible. That's essentially what um, they are trying to get you to do. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an insight in regards to the objectives and how each of these companies actually use objective-based design to ultimately build their website. Now, every single website needs to be based around one single objective. King Kong is slightly different, um, but essentially it's because they're appealing to high paying clients and low paying clients as well, okay? At the beginning of your business, you're only going to be appealing to one type of client, much like founder, for example, who are essentially just wanting to sell people courses. People who are going to be buying the courses are going to be around the same price point. So keep that in mind. Shopify is a really good example as well. The, all they want is just for someone to start a free trial. That's literally all they want to happen. They don't care about anything else, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, and I will uh, see you in the next lesson. So now you see how these successful companies set objectives for their websites to drive their businesses forward. Now you should have a really good idea in regards to how you can lay out your own objectives to push both yourself and your business forward. Again, if you need any guidance or advice with this, pop me an email at scott.brighterfreelance.com. I'm here to help and support, as I said before. So I look forward to hearing from you if you need any additional guidance. Apart from that, I will see you in the next lesson. So very quickly, what is UX design? Well, UX design is essentially a short term for user experience and it refers to how the user interacts with and experiences a product, system or service. With that said, do you need to be an expert in UX design to create a great website? The answer is no. But in this lesson, you should be able to simply understand it enough to be able to keep some things in mind when planning out your website. So tip number one is to keep things really simple. One of the biggest mistakes people make when designing websites is they make things too complicated. The more simple a website is, the easier it is to use, so stay as basic as possible. Tip number two is always guide users to the same place. 
For example, if your objective is to persuade potential clients to get in touch with you or book an appointment, everything must be pointing towards that appointment booking phase. There is no point trying to get users to do multiple things or take various call to actions. Just focus on guiding them to do one simple thing, the most important one. Tip number three is make sure everything is consistent. You can do this by using a pre-existing template on website builders, which will help you position all of your images and text in the right way. And we'll be covering that later on in the course. So please don't worry, it's not complicated. This can really help you to get a great professional and overall feel for your website. And lastly, tip four is sketch out your UX design on paper. Now you can do this on Word, PowerPoint, or any other relevant tool, but as long as you know that even professional website builders, including myself, start off with sketching our UX designs first on paper before implementing the design digitally later, you're golden. So I know you're most likely eager to get started with developing the UX design for your website, which is the first step of developing an amazing website anyway. But before we do that, let's just give you a little bit of a helping hand in regards to structuring the most important page of your entire website, the home page slash landing page. I'll see you soon. Okay, so remember the three questions that we ask ourselves whenever we're coming to a new website? Well, here we're going to lay out the first three sections to your website based on answering these three questions, just like the three examples that we covered early on in the course. So let's begin with the first question, am I in the right place? So your website has to answer this within the first three seconds. As you can see with each of the example websites we covered before, they explain in as few words possible exactly what they offer and also why the person should use them. Remember to keep your opening headline as short as possible as this needs to grab someone's attention super fast and without any hassle. So once your user knows they are in the right place, you now need to win their trust. This can be done in many ways, but most websites use testimonials, reviews, or featured in sections, which just showcases that your brand is trustworthy and essentially the real deal. Social proof is powerful stuff, so use anything that you have, even if you don't have any. Just try and make something up, just have something there so that people can actually understand that you're credible, that you're established, and that you're trustworthy. And lastly, once you have your users trust, this is now time for you to explain the benefits of whatever you're offering. Your user or visitor is going to be open to reading more and learning more about you and what you can offer them. So take this opportunity to basically tell your user what you can offer them and how you can help. Now you can obviously add other things to your homepage, but ultimately you should be focused on starting with these three distinct sections. It's very important and it's going to make your website so much more effective by doing so. Okay, so now you know all the basics and you know everything that you need in regards to building an effective website. In the second half of the course, we're gonna actually start building your website step-by-step step on Webflow. It's a free platform. You can get started right away for free. Let's get started. Hey guys, so we are literally just getting started with building your website and it is very, very exciting indeed. Now, something to keep in mind, as you actually go to Webflow, check the document that is attached to this particular lesson, as this has a link which will take you directly to Webflow and it will get you premium support as a Webflow user. This is something that we have in agreement with Webflow so that when you actually go to their website through this link, you get upgraded automatically to their premium support. So feel free to use that if you really want to. So in regards to signing up, we literally just have to add our email address. We just use a nice simple password and this is really simple stuff i'm just making this video just to give everyone a good example of how to do this nice and fast so you can get on to actually building the website to be honest with you in regards to all of this stuff it doesn't really matter guys you can just kind of scream through these it doesn't matter at this point it's completely irrelevant so don't worry about answering these questions just go straight through and then once it finally loads, you can basically just exit straight away. Perfect. Now you have created your account. The next step is to basically select the correct template for your particular project, which is exactly what we'll be going through in the very next lesson. So once you get onto this page, we now need to select the correct template for your portfolio website. So the best place to go, now you can browse these templates and you know try out some different templates that are out there. There are some fantastic templates out there for portfolio websites. However, I like to go to the free template section. And once you get to this page, 
you have a great range of different portfolio pieces to choose from. This one's actually really good. Um, it's just one of the most basic ones from Webflow, but it is really, really great to use and easy to use. But one which I really want to use with you is this one called Versus. So all we do is click it and then click use for free. All we that is learn how to spend port, spell portfolio. And then we're going to find ourselves here. Now, I know this looks extremely intimidating, but you're going to find out very, very quickly that it is not intimidating in the slightest. In the very next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make this website absolutely incredible and look perfect, ready for you to showcase your work to new clients. I'll see you in the next video. So once you have your template in place, it's now time to begin structuring your website. And this is just a really simple tried and tested kind of structure for people wanting to build a portfolio website. And I've used this for, uh, you know, my agencies in the past, and it does work really, really well. Now, if your objective is to get more clients, then this is the structure that you want to be using or something similar to this. Obviously, you can change it and edit it however you want, but keep the same basic structure as it's really going to help you to get the clients that you're wanting to get. So the homepage should be structured similar to this. So the first, first section that they see, what you do in three seconds, literally six words or less, get the message across. Then instantly, as you go down, now usually you would have a little trust section here, um, kind of, you know, showing maybe how many clients you've worked with or, you know, maybe something else, but just show your work, show your best work because that is what's going to get the client to get in touch with you. Ultimately, a client wants to see work that they themselves desire or want for their own brand. That is the key, okay? If you can do that, you are onto a winner, okay? And then contact or CTA. So, Basically, you want, the, you want the client to either contact you, but my little personal preference is to set up a Calendly link and basically say, listen, let's have a free discovery call. Clients would rather have a free discovery call with you than just get in touch with you because then they can actually engage with you and see if you're the right person for them. If, they, if you're not, then they'll just leave. If you are the right person for them, then you essentially get to converse with them. You get to find out more about their project and it gives you a higher chance of actually closing the sale. So make sure we use a CTA. If not, just use a contact form. Now, uh, footer, link out to all of your other portfolios, maybe your Instagram, maybe your Behance, maybe you know, your LinkedIn, whatever it is that's relevant to your business and the services that you're trying to provide, whatever is relevant to your actual portfolio website, link to it on social media because it's going to add credibility. Make sure that is on every single footer as well. I'll show you how to do that within the next couple of lessons. So the next page is the about you page. So what makes you unique? Why would someone want to choose you and your portfolio and your work above everyone else? So again, showcase who you are, what makes you unique and why people should care about you. Really, really important. Okay. Next, go to the products and services. So what products and services do you actually offer? Are you, just a, are you a graphic designer and you offer everything or do you just focus on logo design or do you focus on you know, brand identity or do you focus on social media marketing? Like Whatever it is, you need to show very, very clearly what you have to offer. Super, super important because otherwise people are not going to know what you can offer them, okay? Make it very simple and very straightforward. Now next, the next section down here, now you can either do a contact or CTA, you can even do both as a matter of fact. Let me just do that. Yeah, so this is what I would do if I was you. So I would either do the top two sections and then I would do either an upsell to a higher standard of package. So for example, maybe a, a personal coaching, for example. So maybe say, oh, like, do you want me to actually you know, guide you through every single process of building your new website or do you just want me to design your website so you just kind of give it an upsell once they've seen your work and seen the services that you offer so this is kind of like the premium package that you would offer alternatively if you didn't want to add that you could just or you, did, or you just weren't comfortable adding that or you just didn't have anything to put there you could just put the cta and the footer okay there's nothing wrong with that ultimately the the cta or the contact is your objective. So you're wanting to generate leads and this is generating the lead. So that's why it's on every single page, okay? Next, case studies in your portfolio. So you need to showcase people 
what you can do. Like you need to showcase what you can do to people who are on your website. Make sure that you showcase the entire process. This is just a little tip that I'd like to share with you because it's really helped me in my business. Make sure you showcase the entire process from start to finish on every single project that you work on. The reason being is it's going to show that you have expertise. I've already been through this early on in the course and you are going to seriously, seriously get some incredible results. We actually have a completely separate course based solely on how to develop a world-class portfolio, which is on our profile now. It should be live right now. If not, then it's still in development, but it should be live by the time you, you are watching this. So check that out. That is really, really going to help you take your portfolio to the next level. So make sure you check that out. It's really, really good stuff. And then again, for that, and then afterwards, make sure you have your contact us um, page just in case anyone wants to get in contact in you know the old-fashioned way. Ideally, we want them to you know get a uh, meeting through the Calendly link, but worst case scenario, they can just contact you and you can set up a meeting with them a little bit later on. So I really appreciate you guys, um, you know, like everyone, every single one of the students. I think we've had around 12,000 students so far, and it's really, really great to see you know so many people using what we're teaching them to you know take their business to the next level and just their personal brand and you know their you know what, what they're trying to do in their life it's just super super humbling now i understand that there are a million and one courses out there but what i want to do is just make sure that you are fully aware that i am here to support you if you need any help with any aspect of this course or any other course that we offer okay so please email me at scottabrightofreelance.com and i am here to support you i'm here to help i am not just there to be a shadow and just to you know essentially you know be your guide through this course i want to guide you personally and make sure that everything is implemented correctly so feel free to pop over an example of your website and i'll check it out and give you some advice anything that you want i'm here for you okay um but yeah let's uh, let's crack on with the rest of the website let's get back into webflow and start actually structuring each page so we can uh, start to build this website and make something amazing okay thank you so much and i will see you in the next lesson so once we have your website section all planned out we now need to start building it on webflow so the fantastic thing about this particular theme is that we already have a great structure to work from and all we need to add is basically the call to action section at the bottom of each page and this is really really simple to do and i'll show you how right now so webflow is an amazing program because you can literally just copy and paste elements anywhere that you want and it makes it super easy to use so for example we need to add our call to action section down here now we can do this in just three simple steps the first step is to add a section so we drag and drop a section into the website okay now the next step is to basically add a div block so we add the div block into the section and once we have the div block we can then simply select this CTA section, so the heading wrapper, press copy, just like you're using a Word document or anything else, copy and paste, and then paste it into the div block. And look at that, we literally have a beautiful CTA section right where we need it. Now, as you can see, there's been quite a lot of space added to the top of this section. Now, the reason for that is this particular wrapper, so what we just copied and pasted, has some space added to the wrapper so that's why it's all the way down here and it isn't nice and tight beside the portfolio pieces now we are going to move this up by reducing the margin here okay now if we just reduce the margin now then that looks good so if we reduce it to zero for example that looks good but because we copied and pasted this section from this section it also edited this section. So how do we edit it to make sure that it stays there and we get the space right in this section? Now it's really easy and all you need to do is press heading wrapper, click here, add a class, a smaller space, and then literally just click that to zero. What that does is it makes this particular element unique to this element. So this element stays the same and this element is unique so that if we change anything about this element now, it's going to be completely different 
to this element. So it will not affect this particular wrapper. So once we have this section all done, we now simply just need to add this section, copy and paste into the About Us page. So we need to add it to the About Us page and we do that by clicking Body and Paste and then dragging this above the footer. There you go. We can do it also on the Projects template by going to the bottom, clicking Body, Paste, and then dragging it again just above the footer. And lastly, we'll go to the Contact Us page now we could add a seat here to the contact us page, but because this is essentially a form and people are coming to this page to get in contact with you anyway, it doesn't make sense to add one here. So we're just going to leave it. By the way, just one quick other comment. If you are looking to truly create a portfolio, which is not only great like this is going to be, but world-class, then we actually have another course which shows you how to create a portfolio at the same level of agencies, world-class agencies such as Pendergram and Charlie Smith Design. It is one of the most amazing courses. I'm so, so proud of it. Me and my team have worked so, so hard in developing this course to really help new designers, you know, social media managers, whoever it is, whoever actually uses a portfolio to create a portfolio, which is going to help them to truly secure high paying clients, much like Pentagram. I think Pentagram charged something like, you know, $50,000 per project, which is an obscene amount of money. And obviously they have a huge office in many different countries, but it seriously does make the, all the difference when you have a good, well-rounded portfolio, which is well presented and beautifully designed. So now we have our structure correct and ready to go. It's now time to start adding images to our website. And that is exactly what we'll be doing in the very next lesson. So I'll see you there. Okay, so we now have our website structure in place and we have our CTA at the bottom of each page, apart from the Contact Us page because we don't need it there. Remember that. Now, the next step is to essentially change all of the imagery, the logo, the, the project pages, obviously, because these are not our projects. Um, just basically make the website look more visual. Okay, and we can do that in a really simple way. Now, remember, Webflow is a very easy program to use. So to change images, it's very, very simple. For example, if we want to change the logo, we simply just double click on the nav bar, click the text block, delete the text block by clicking backspace, click logo, press add, scroll down to image, and then drop this inside the logo bar. Like so. We'll then be asked to choose an image. Now, I actually have some images ready and waiting so I can actually use them to show you exactly how the website could look if you have great imagery. So you simply just upload the payment. And there we are, we have the new logo in place. But it's very big. We both know this is very big. So the next step is to basically just scale it down to a size which is more relevant to the website design. This size works perfectly. Then just click off. And we now have a brand new logo for Mark Walker's portfolio. And the process is exactly the same for every single image on the website. For example, if we take the hero section, for example, which is this section here, we go down to the backgrounds panel, the linear gradient is the gray gradient across the bottom of the section. So this is connecting the hero section with this section here. So to change the image behind the gradient, we simply go to this section here, click choose image, upload, and then we simply select the image that we want as part of our design and we'll see it upload here. And there you go, it is now live on the website. Okay, so I think we can all agree that this green is not really suiting the website design right now, but don't worry, we're going to change that in a future lesson. So just keep it as it is for now. At the moment, what we want to be focusing on is changing all of the images across every single asset on the website.
Now you can see here in the footer that we have another logo, which was previously in the top left hand corner of the website. Now we also want to change this logo. So how do we do it? Well, you can simply just double click on the footer, take the footer logo and delete it. And by delete it, all you do, just like a Word document, all you need to do is simply press backspace. It's as simple as that. Then go to the image panel and drag and drop this inside the container. Now the container helps to keep structure within the website. So if there's ever a container, make sure that you add whatever elements that you're adding inside the container. If you have any questions in regards to that, please just email me at scott at brighterfreelance.com and I will be happy to help you. So there we go. We now have an incredible website with the logo at the bottom and also at the top. Now we're going to change this text later on, but one thing that I wanted to just check with you and just kind of go over with you is the logo here now has a little bit of a margin to elevate it from this wording. I just wanted to give it a little bit of space. And I did that just instinctively, but I just want to explain why. So we want to give elements space to breathe. And this is what gives, you know, the Apple website, for example, a really strong presence because it's easy for you to look at all these different elements. And I think we can all agree that it looks a lot better like this. So make sure that you can add margins on the left, on the right. So for example, if I wanted to make it that way, I could do that. If I wanted to have it the other way, then I could do that. But ultimately, you should only be using the top and bottom margins for most elements, especially when we have a preset template like this in play. So if we can literally just take a little bit more time to add the final couple of images... you can see that the overall design is really starting to come together, which I'm really happy about. Okay, so the last images that we need to change are the project images. So how do we change those? It's really, really simple. You can't just click into them and change them like this. You need to go into the CMS, okay? You don't need to know the details. It's just really, really simple how you can just click into the CMS and each of the projects are listed here. All you need to change is the project thumbnail here. And please be aware that the dimensions of each thumbnail are 800 by 600. Now you can have them hit 800 by 800 or a different variation, but to keep the same dimensions as what there are currently on the website, make sure that they are 800 by 600. And you can make any image, any size that you want by using online um, softwares, or you can even just use PowerPoint or Keynote if you're an Apple user. So really simple, just replace. And then all we want to do is go in and change the images. Make sure you save it for each of the projects. And when we're doing this and when we're saving it, it's automatically updating the website behind us. So although we're working in the CMS, the website is being updated and I'll show you why a little bit later on in the course. So once we have all the images updated for each of the projects, we now can simply just go back to the homepage and you'll see that all of the images have been updated automatically. Now at this point, I really want to explain why they all updated automatically. So you don't need to know the details for it at this moment in time. This would be for a more advanced course, but at the moment we just want to create a really professional looking portfolio that you can showcase your work on. But basically this section, this image is connected to the project. So any image or any content that you put into that particular project in the CMS, which we've just been in, that will automatically update on here. And if, for example, you want to add another project, it's really, really simple. You can either go to the section and press duplicate, or you can simply just press add new project. 
and it's exactly the same. You simply just need to add your image in here. Now our website is actually looking pretty good at the moment. We have all our nice projects, we have our logo, we have our imagery here. And I just wanna press the preview section, which is this little eye icon here, just to have a little look through the website, just to see how things are looking. They're looking good. Looking good, looking good. Perfect, perfect. Things are coming along very, very nicely. Now, you probably have gathered that the text in this website is not yet relevant to what we need it for. So that is what we're gonna be changing in the next lesson of this course, okay? And I will see you in the very next lesson. See you soon. So we have all the imagery perfectly placed in our website and now it's time to change the text. Now, remember when I said that changing things on Webflow was super easy. Now, if you've used a Word document or any program on any computer for that matter, you know that all you need to do is click and edit like that. This is just as simple as it is in Webflow. You literally just click, delete, and type. It is as simple as that. And you can do this across any of the pages. It is so, so, so easy. So I'm gonna very quickly change all of the text on this particular website so that Mark Walker can actually start selling some of his services. And then we can start to change colors and also the links on each of these boxes so we can start to really generate leads for Mark Walker. Okay, so we now have all of the text on the website changed in accordance with Mark Walker and what he is offering. Okay, so there's a little bit about Mark here. So you book a discovery call, we'll be adding things to that afterwards. Perfect, things are looking very, very slick. Now, we all know that this green is not going to cut it when it comes to the design, it just does not look good. So how can we change this green to a nice yellow, for example, to match the photography? So the way that we can do that is we just click the element, go to the design column, and you can see the color here. So just click that and add our new color. Wow, that is going to look so, so good. And then what we can do is, if we go down to, we want to now change the outline. And voila, it looks really, really smart. It looks super good. And what you'll see is because this is connected to the other discovery buttons in the website, it will change all of the other buttons automatically for you. Perfect, so now we have this change. Let's just change this up here. And as you can see, we just change this. Then it's starting to look really, really smart. Okay, so now we've changed all the text, we've changed all the colors. How do we link these buttons to the relevant places? So what I would always suggest is for the CTA section to set up a Calendly account. Now, what is a Calendly account and how do you use it? So Calendly is essentially a, a personal assistant who books all of your meetings for you. So for example, if we go to this here and we click the link, it goes to an automatic calendar which you preset and let people know when you're available. So if I click on the 12th, it has all the times which I'm available on the 12th Wednesday of January, okay? So it's really, really useful because it's gonna save you a ton of time. It also makes you look extremely professional. Now, set up each event that you want to offer. At this point, you could only be offering one. Uh, let's use my brand consultation service, which is here. So I copy the link here and then all I do is just click on this button, click the cog, click the little URL icon, and then copy and paste the URL in that section. 
Now it's really important at this point to click the open in new tab. Now the reason for that is because when someone actually comes to your website and clicks the discovery call, we don't want them to leave the website just in case they need to come back to it. So this essentially opens a new tab where they can book their appointment and then just close the tab. So once you do this for each of the discovery buttons on the website, And what I've just arranged here is the color has changed, but I forgot to change the letters on the project page. So make sure that you change them on yours. Perfect. That is looking great. And that's linking out to the Calendly page. So as you can see, whenever we click the book discovery call, it automatically opens the Calendly link and allows people to book direct appointments into your calendar using the Calendly service. Now, from what I can remember, I think the Calendly service is free to a certain point. I think you can have maybe one or two events for free, but then afterwards, if, you, if it gets a little bit more complex and you have more needs and more requirements and it gets obviously your, your business grows bigger, then you may need to pay a small fee, but it's worth every single penny because it saves so much time. So at this point, we've changed all the letters. We've changed all of the buttons and we've also linked out to all of the different sections. I just want to see where this button goes because I don't think we changed this one. Perfect. Get a quote for your project. It goes to the contact us page where we can get quotes and people can just get in touch with us about their project. Now, I just want to check each of the different pages because I do feel like we may have missed something based on where our website is at the moment. So let me just check each of the page. Ah, there we go. So this section hasn't been changed. This heading color has not been changed. And you can see it does not suit the website whatsoever. So let me just change the color of this here. And we can get that color again from here. Go down to this, copy and paste. Go up here. Yeah, there we go. And we are looking pretty good. If you want to change any of the fonts, actually, you can also do this here in typography. So just make sure that you change it. Because I, I feel like that was just a little bit too bold. It was kind of too in your face. So we change it to this. I feel like that looks a lot better. Okay, so we have the home page and all of the other pages arranged. Now the last step is to essentially start to add projects to our portfolio. I'm going to show you how to do that in the very next lesson. And I cannot wait to show you how to set everything up so it looks clean, efficient, amazing and it's going to help you generate lots of new clients for your business. I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, so how do we add elements to our project page so we can really show off all of our incredible work? Now, it's really, really easy to do and I'm going to show you how to do it in this very video. So in regards to the design which we had before, you'll see that it looked a little bit like this. Okay, so we had um, this section here and it just kind of looked very, very plain and not very aesthetically pleasing, not very visual. So how do we edit what's on these pages? Again, it's inside the CMS. Now, the first step that we need to do is to basically take this image, press the cog icon and connect it to the CMS, as we mentioned before, by clicking get image from projects and then click project thumbnail. Okay, now at this point, we do not need to change anything here on this page. We're going to change all of this inside the CMS here. Okay, but at this point, we can see that with the correct changes, we can create a really elegant looking project page showing off all of our work in a really well formatted way. So let's do that now with one of the projects. So let's choose this one which is essentially going to be project seven, I believe, in my elements, which is this one here. Perfect. Now, in regards to the actual brand, you can see here that the brand is called Natura. So let's just change Natura here. You can change the, the slug as well if you really want to, but it's not really necessary. So we have the project thumbnail in place. 
that's perfect. Now the next section is to basically change the text. Take away any text which is unnecessary. Take away this image. And again, all I'm doing is selecting and deleting those images. Perfect. So now we have this. Now we need to add the other images for the project. So we do this by clicking this little plus sign, pressing that, and then by simply just selecting these images here. Now we don't want to use the same image that we've already used for the thumbnail. So let's just choose this one. Make sure you, when you do this to click this little button here, this just makes sure that the image is stretched across the entire screen, making it fully responsive. Then just click below and follow the exact same process. Okay, so we've added all of our images for the project. So let's just save it and go into the project. So this is ultimately what the viewer will see when they come to the project. So we have our logo, that's good. We have all of the images, which look good. And then it should go into our other projects. Perfect, that looks really good. I'm really, really pleased with that. Now, just one last little tiny detail. You may see at the bottom that you have categories which range from app design, graphic design, icon design, mobile design. Now, obviously, these may not be relevant to you. So how do we add new categories if we need them? Okay, because there's quite a few here and these may be what you need. But what if we need to add, I don't know, social media management, for example. Let's just use that as an example. So what we would do to add this to the categories is save, go to categories, click new category, add social media management, click create. And then when we go to projects, say for example on Matura, when we scroll down, we should have social media management here. So again, everything's nice and connected. So you don't have to do any work once you set things up. So now we have the projects actually uploaded onto the website and you can simply just go and connect and Now, one thing to remember is just to double check, go to the link block here and essentially click this link and make sure this is on current project. The reason being is if it isn't on current project, when you click on the actual image, it won't go anywhere. So we need to make sure that each of these projects are linked up to the, to the URL in the, in the CMS. So make sure that it's all linked up, it all looks good, and then it should be a case of just updating every single project on there and just adding your projects as you go. And then ultimately, when users come to your website, they'll be able to go through, browse your work, and at the very end, book their discovery call, which we've already been through in the previous lesson. So now we have all your project pages ready to go. The next step is to basically add your favicon and domain to your website. This is going to be one of the last stages and it's going to be one of the most important things to really get right. The reason being, when you go to any website, they have little favicons here which are just little indicators in regards to the website and how credible it is. So we're going to add that in the very next lesson. I will see you then. Okay, so how do we add our favicon and custom domain to the website? As you see now, we can't actually publish the selected domains because we don't have hosting. Now, this is a really simple step in the process. And the way that I got to that page was just simply clicking to click here, 
which will take you to the settings. Now, here what you'll see is the different types of hosting that you need for the website. Now, the CMS is the best option for portfolio users because it's just so simple to use and you also get premium hosting with premium support and lots of other incredible benefits as well. Now, first and foremost, let's just change the favicon because it's one of the simplest things to do. So just go to general. Now this is the web clip. So for example, when you open a new uh, browser, this is what will be used. But the actual favicon is what we see up here for Webflow. So let's just change this to this for Mark Walker. That for that. And that looks pretty goddamn cool. So that's gonna change up here in the top right hand corner. And we will literally just publish it. Perfect. Now, it's, it's telling me that we need to verify our email address to add hosting. Now, this is just a simple case of going into your email and confirming that your email is correct. They're just simply checking that you're a real person because obviously this is a free you know, software to use. So they just wanna make sure that you're a real person and you are actually going to be building a website which is gonna be used and not just wasting their, you know, their, their resources and their time. So make sure you verify your email address and I'm gonna go and verify my email address now so that we can move on to the next step of the process. So just to show you how I connected my domain for my website, it's really, really simple. You simply just go to the hosting panel, click on the plan that you want, which CMS is probably the best for the portfolio website that you're looking to do. This is what I have for Clementine House's website. And once you have that, it's simply just a case of adding custom domain. Now when you add a custom domain, you'll essentially just type in your domain. So let's put uh, clementineacademy.com, add domain. Now what it'll do is it'll simply just ask you to verify the actual domain itself. Now I'm just gonna delete this because obviously I have my domains in place right now anyway. But what you can also do is buy a new domain through either GoDaddy or Google. And when you do that, you simply just open up the GoDaddy address, put in your password, and then you can simply just connect it really, really simply by automatically buying the domain through either Google or GoDaddy. So just to confirm, if you already have a URL or a domain bought, then you would add an existing domain. Just type it in here and it's gonna automatically open the provider. So whether you bought it at GoDaddy or Google or some other, you know, some other third, third party provider, it will automatically open it so that you can automatically link your website to your, your domain. If you don't have a domain yet, you can buy one by simply clicking buy new domain and then clicking GoDaddy and it'll open up the account tab. If you don't have an account, then just simply create an account. It's absolutely fine. It just takes a little bit more time. But once you have that, and once you have your domain connected in your plan in place, all you need to do is click publish, click your custom domain, and then publish to selected domains. Now, once it's published, you'll see it in nice green that is there saying published. And how you can check this is simply by clicking this little button here. As you can see, the Clementine House website is very, very much alive. And you can see all of our projects. You can see, you know, all of our, um, you know, images. You can see everything. Now, this website is a lot more complicated than the portfolio website, which we've designed ourselves in this particular course. However, at some point in the near future, your website could be, and very well will be, just as good as our website at Clementine House. We've been building that website for the last couple of years, and we started out with something very, very similar to the Mark Walker website, which we've just built in this course. So baby steps, don't try to run before you can crawl, and just take it step by step. Build up your portfolio, and then afterwards you can make a far more complex website with potentially another course that we're going to develop in the near future where we can show you how to really take your, your portfolio and your website to the next level.
Now, as I mentioned before, if you really want to take your portfolio to the next level, now this, this portfolio is going to get you clients 110% if you have great work. But if you really want to take your portfolio to the next level and start to get higher paying clients, then there's a step that you have to take to enable yourself to create more complex and more elegant looking portfolios. And we actually show you how to do this, as I mentioned, in the portfolio course that I'm going to make live in the next couple of days. So it should be live by the time you get to this section. Okay. So what I want to do is I just want to give you a little bit of time to maybe look through that course and ask any questions. Again, you can get in contact with me at scott at brighterfreelance.com, but I am here to help you. Remember, I am here to help you and help you create the best website possible. So have an incredible day. I will move on to the next lesson. And if you have any questions, please, please let me know. I am here to help. Okay, so we have everything ready on our website and all of our projects are done. All of our pages are looking beautiful. But there's one last step, which a lot of designers uh, that don't know what they're doing, to be honest, and a lot of people who are essentially creating websites don't check. And it's really, really important. It's probably one of the most important things that you need to check as a website designer. Now, I know you're not a website designer or you may be a website designer, but if you are creating a website which is based around, you know, really generating leads and building your business. Something as simple as this is going to help you generate leads, but it needs to be responsive on tablet and mobile devices. So how can we check that? Really, really simply. And because we have essentially created this entire website based on a template that has already been formatted, everything is going to be fully responsive automatically. Now that's one of the most beautiful things about working with templates. And as I said before, it's a truly efficient and amazing way to work because all of the images, every single aspect of the website is already fully responsive and ready to go. It doesn't matter which page you go to. It doesn't matter where you go. Everything is fully responsive and ready to go. So you don't have to change anything, no matter whether your clients are looking on a, a full screen laptop or a full screen Mac or a tablet or a mobile device. It doesn't matter. Everything is going to work perfectly. And that is the beauty of following this incredible process, which I've been so, so lucky to guide you through. If you have any questions whatsoever, you know where to find me, scott at brighterfreelance.com. I am here to support you. I'm here to help you create the best portfolio website possible. And again, if you are really serious about creating incredible portfolios, much like the Clementine House portfolio that I showed you before and the Pentagram portfolio and also the uh, Charlie Smith portfolio, check out our new course, which is going to show you how to create a world-class portfolio on this website. You can use this exact same format and it's truly going to help you to gain those high paying clients that you are looking for so you can create a truly comfortable living. Thank you so much for your time, your energy. Again, you know where to reach out to me and have an incredible day.